Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Bridget. I'm a nurse practitioner. Today we will be going over five NCLEX pharmacology questions courtesy of nursing.com. Between August 16th through August 24, nursing.com is having a huge back to school promo and they are offering 40% off of their two year plan. And in addition, anyone that starts a new two year membership, they will be shipped a book bundle that is a total savings of about $300. This book bundle includes 140 must-know meds, 63 must-know lab values, nursing mnemonics, and second edition NCLEX review book. All right, let's get started. If a drug experiences a strong first pass metabolism, which route is the best for administration? The first pass effect is when a drug is metabolized usually by the liver before it gets into the systemic circulation. So anything oral is out of the question. So first, like previously said, first pass metabolism means that when a drug is absorbed into the gut, it gets metabolized by the liver and it doesn't leave enough of the drug to be therapeutic. So um, drug, drug absorption in the lower rectum is transported directly uh, into the systemic circulation. According to an article in Frontiers in Pharmacology, drug absorption in the upper part of the rectum is transported to the liver via the portal system. So on the NCLEX, don't overthink it, right? This is still part of the GI tract, right? The GI tract goes from oral to anus. And the, the only one that completely bypasses first pass metabolism is the IV route. So that is the best Again, with their keywords, that is the best route for administration. A nurse is volunteering in a local free clinic and has seen multiple clients experiencing sinus congestion. The nurse should recommend which treatment that is over the counter as an effective treatment for sinus congestion. Amoxicillin is an antibiotic. Anything that usually ends in illin, right? Penicillin, amoxicillin, those are antibiotics. Diphenhydramine is Benadryl. The keyword here is congestion. So diphenhydramine, that's Benadryl, and Benadryl is an antihistamine, so it can dry out the sinuses, but this isn't really talking about allergies, it's talking about sinus congestion. And um, which one of these would be effective? So Sudafed, this is Sudafed, and Triprolidine is an antihistamine. The combination of the antihistamine with the Sudafed will help congestion. Boric acid is actually rat poison. Um, it's sometimes used also uh, for women. Women sometimes will use it for bacterial vaginosis, but it is definitely toxic. It cannot be ingested orally because it can kill you. So out of all the options, this is the best option. Even though, again, don't overthink it on the NCLEX, um, technically, pseudofedrin is, you usually have to ask for it behind the counter. It is usually controlled now um, because of uh, drug cocktails that people make. This is a decongestion and antihistamine combined. Diphenhydramine is only an antihistamine. Amoxicillin is an antibiotic. And as previously stated, boric acid helps treat bacterial vaginosis when it is used as a vaginal suppository. It should never be ingested orally. Every once in a while, the system will glitch and I'm missing question three. So I will, it goes from two to four. So I will do another question at the end to make up for number three. A nurse is teaching a family about how to administer medication to their nine month old child at home. The medication has been ordered as a liquid preparation, which information from the nurse is the most appropriate. Once again, with NCLEX, you want to pick the most or the best or the most correct. So the reason why it's drop the medication in a syringe and administer it in the baby's cheek is because, and we're not talking about a syringe with a needle, we're talking about a syringe that you can get from the pharmacy. The caregiver then squirts the liquid into the pocket of the child's cheek a little at a time until she swallows it and a baby should have adequate suck reflex that he or she may also suck on the syringe while the caregiver squirts it into the mouth towards the direction of the cheek because we don't want them to choke. So if you put it in the cheek, they're better able to take it. Um, you don't want to wait until the child has just woken up from a nap. That's an aspiration risk. They should be fully awake and you don't want them lying down again, aspiration risk. And you can't, first of all, always, if you see um, absolute statements as an answer, you can usually rule it out. So must, always, never, cannot. 
the reason why you don't want to always mix medication with food is because what if you mix it with the food and then the child doesn't want to eat the food? So what are you going to do then? Or they only eat half of what you mixed it in. Now you have no way of knowing like if it's an antibiotic, did you give them enough of the antibiotic? Is it not enough? Is it subtherapeutic? A client has liver failure and is experiencing increased levels of ammonia. The nurse anticipates an order for which of the following medication. So when they have increased ammonia levels, we want something that is going to bind to that ammonia and get it out of their system. And lactulose is the correct answer for this. And uh, lactulose, it's an osmotic laxative. It draws water into the bowels, inducing loose bowel movement, which facilitates excretion of ammonia. And lactulose also decreases the production of ammonia in the bowel. And this is a, biscadil is a stimulant laxative, but it doesn't help decrease ammonia levels. Um, this, these are all laxatives, but this should not be used in liver failure because it can be toxic to the liver and milk of magnesia does not decrease ammonia levels. This, we just saw a lot, um, when I used to work on the floor, so it was more knowledge based. So let me do one more practice question. So this is the last practice question. I promised you five. Here's the fifth one. A physician has ordered a unit of packed red blood cells for a client with anemia. Before administering the blood product, the nurse checks the client's vital signs and notes that he has a temperature of 103. Which action should the nurse perform next? Check the client's heart rate and blood pressure and then start the transfusion. Administer antibiotics, increase the rate of IV bolus hold the blood transfusion and contact the provider. Something is going on. An increase in temperature that occurs after getting a blood transfusion is a sign of a transfusion reaction. However, elevated temperature before the administration of blood is unrelated to the blood transfusion, but the nurse should withhold the transfusion until she has cleared it with the provider. The client may have an infection or a medical condition that could be worsened with the administration of blood products or treating the fever may take precedence, precedence over administering the blood product. So it would be important to assess why is this patient's temperature so high. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, join the challenge and help me hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of September. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, drop a comment below if you want NCLEX questions on a different topic, such as cardiac, respiratory, etc.